Okay. Selamat pagi kepada kawan-kawan and also my fellow EPs lah. Today I'm going to present about the hypertension in pregnancy, mainly about ectopia management and the definition. So why do we need to know about the hypertension in pregnancy? Because according to statistics, hypertension state in pregnancy is quite high lah since for the past few years, but then it's gradually improving lah for the recent years. Dah semakin kurang lah. So, for the general classification of hypertension in pregnancy, kita ada gestational hypertension, chronic hypertension, chronic hypertension plus preeclampsia or preeclampsia to eclampsia lah. So, for our ED setting, what we did, do know mainly about the blood pressure control, seizures uh, prevention lah, for the patient. For uh, definition of chronic hypertension, it's all the hypertension that prior to the 20 week of gestation, uh, or patient should have hypertension prior to the pregnant. Or after pregnant, after three months of postpartum, dia punya hypertension masih ada. So, women with chronic hypertension, uh, ada increased risk of placenta eruption, preeclampsia, low birth weight, or uh, prone to seizure delivery premature birth and fetal date lah. Gestational hypertension hyper, uh, defined as a pre, uh, hypertension after 20 weeks of gestation. But then dia tak ada proteinuria. So for preeclampsia, for fulfill preeclampsia, dulu kita ada kena fulfill tiga benda. But, but then for the recent years, dia ada update lah dia regarding the definition. So the old definition defined as a hypertension uh, must more than 20 weeks of gestation, the BP must more than 140 or 90 or proteinuria. So according to the CPG, the previously increase of 15 uh, mmHg and also 30 mg are no, no longer recognized. Lah. So skang for due D5 preeclampsia must more than 140 or 90. Preeclampsia, they're gonna fulfill tiga benda lah. For SPP, more than 140, over diastole, more than 190, and the gestation week must more than 20 weeks, and also they have proteinuria. Lah. But then recently, they had a newly definition of preeclampsia. Later, I will talk about it. Lah. So, for the proteinuria, our setting, our setting ED, urine district, must more than 2 plus. Lah. And then, kalau dekat work, they are more than 300 mg protein in the 24 hours of urine sample, or protein creatinine ratio for more than 30 uh, milligram per millimole. So since 2013, there are the new definition of preeclampsia. So if a patient presented with uh, high BP and then uh, more than 20 weeks of gestation, but if you don't have protein, but with the uh, blood investigation such as thrombocytopenia, platelet less than 100,000, uh, ada AKI, significant AKI, ada liver function test impaired, or patient presented with company of APO, or new onset of cerebral or visual system, kita kena suspect per eclampsia lah. So, when we deal with the patient with the per eclampsia, normally we send about PE profile lah. Or oh, we didn't, uh, for full blood count, we need to know that uh, dia tengok dia ada some other severe Preeclampsia, thrombocytopenia, less platelet, or they are the AKI, or liver function test to look for any transaminitis, or liver function test involved. Any LTH to suspect, to tengok dia ada any hemolysis, or urine, prosnin distic, protein creatinine ratio, and also uric acid. So, diagnosis of preeclampsia with severe features, macam tadi uh, uh, cakap, dia ada thrombocytopenia, Catomania, platelet is less than 100,000. For patient presented with APO or new onset of a cerebral visual disturbance or any liver function test or any AKI. So, for they are moderate and high risk untuk dapat eclampsia and preeclampsia lah, such as a primary gravida, uh, advanced maternal age of age more than 40 or they had a pregnancy interval for more than 10 years, and they obese patient, and they have a history of preeclampsia and multiple pregnancy. And they then had a hypertensive disease during previous pregnancy, and a CKD, and an autoimmune disease, 
operation with a type 1 or type 2 DM and also previous having a chronic hypertension. Uh. So the cause of preeclampsia is actually unknown yet. But then, pernah orang cakap, hysteresis homark lesion such as acute arteriosis of deciduous arterias. So, the arteriosis and thrombosis menyebabkan dia prasenta ischemia and infarct. Subsequently, release the oxidative stress, free latica, and cause the inflammation response and lead to preeclampsia lah. So, the complication of uh, preeclampsia and eclampsia involve uh, acute kidney injury, cerebral hemorrhage, uh, liver injury, or coagulopathy, DIVC, and vascular leaking lah, pamalini edema, and then yang paling teruk, maternal death and fetal death. So, kita ada satu HEALP syndrome lah, hemolysis elevated liver enzyme and also low platelet lah, yang ni important clinically whether of preeclampsia. So, HEALP, kalau treat as HEALP, selalunya kita start with uh, IV magnesium sulfate lah, and also emit for stabilization and also BP control. So, kalau patient presented with 20 V of pregnancy and then uh, abdominal pain with the abnormality blood result, we should have suspect the HELLP syndrome. So, eclampsia is macam preeclampsia. Definition sama, just that they are new onset of new onset of feeding. Uh, the outcome is actually poor. It's one of a woman die of eclampsia. Lah. And then 23% will require mechanical ventilation and 35% will involve a systemic dysfunction associated with eclampsia. So when we talk about the management, so when my combine eclampsia and preeclampsia, we treating it, uh, usually we start with ABCD, lah, airway, breathing, circulation. So first we secure the airway, breathing and circulation. Lah. Kalau airway semua breathing semua okay. We look with uh, magnesium sulfate lah. Magnesium sulfate, the doses given a 4 gram uh, over 10 minutes lah. 4 gram itu kita ambil 8, 8 ml daripada magnesium sulfate 2.47 itu. We mix with uh, 12 ml of normal saline lah. And then we run over 10 minutes. And then kalau in the KK setting whereby magnesium sulfate IV is not available, IV access is not available, we can, can give magnesium. Well, I am lah. I am is 10 gram low dictos followed by 5 gram lah, every 4 hours in alternative patox. So, uh, kalau medicine file surface semua tak ada, patient presented with fitting, we can also give a lizard pump lah, IV value 5 to 10 mg bolus. So, uh, when we talk about medicine surface, dia punya Pathophysiology, they are that act on a beberapa benda lah of regarding a medicine sulfate. So, they are that act on a smooth muzzle, they are relax the smooth muzzle, subsequently lead to vessel dilation, decrease the vascular resistance, and then subsequently reduce the BP. Also, they are act on a neuron, increase the seizure trajectory by possible act on the NAPMA. Kita, they aspartate receptor antagonist lah, subsequently increase the seizure trajectory. Also, they add on the brain barrier by limiting the cerebral edema, lah, decrease the ICP. So, when we talk about, when we started on IV medicine sulfate, what we need to monitor of the patient ialah, we need to monitor the unit output at least 38 ml per hour, lah, and then uh, monitor the respiratory rate of the patient, and then we need to and then we need to check about patella reflex lah, of the patient and then monitor the vital sign of BP. Why is it, why is it important? Because kalau ada hypermanesemia, they akan inhibit the calcium influx. Subsequently, tak ada acetylcholine release. So, muscle tak boleh to contract. Kalau muscle tak boleh to contract, they lead to respiratory failure lah and then a CNS depression, etc. So normal serum uh, uh, magnesium sulfate is 1.4 to uh, 0.7 to 1. Uh. But then for therapeutic level in preeclampsia and eclampsia, we aim for 2 to 3 millimole. So kalau dah more than 4 to 5, 
patient data absent of patella defects lah. And then 5 to 7.5, patient data and breathing semakin slow. Kalau 6 to 7 millimol, respiratory defect lah, paralysis, patient unable to breathe lah. And then mati kalau 12.5 to 15. So kalau kita started on IV medicine sulfate, we need to monitor the magnesium level at least 4 to 6 hour lah. Every 4 to 6 hour we need to monitor and also monitor the reflex, the RR, the urine output, the vital sign. So the antidote of magnesium sulfate is a calcium coconut lah, 1 MPU over 1 hour over 10 minutes lah. So if a person presented with uh, seizures, uh, we can give a uh, tada medicine sulfate or medicine sulfate is complicated, we give a uh, diazepam, lorazepam. And also, if a patient presented with complaining of persistent fitting, uh, papa, we might need a CT scan to draw out ICB. Uh, and also, to go out of press, uh, posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. So for BP control, we target the BP by having the BP more than 160 over 110. Uh. So if the patient is uh, stable, young patient, that, that patient only hypertension, that, that they can say that they can say we can give a nifotapina uh, by 5 to 10 mg step, and then uh, repeat BP to uh, repeat in 30 minutes uh, in every Necessary if necessary. So other choice of labetolo, other choice of for the BP control, we can give for IV labetolo. IV labetolo, we can give for boluses first lah. IV labetolo, 20 mg, and over 40 mg over 10 to 15, 20 minutes. But then contraindication dia ialah uh, patient ada asthma lah. Bila tanya patient ada asthma ke tak. And then kalau patient ada contraindication to labetolo, we actually can give hydrolyzy lah, 5 to 10 mg slow bolus and then might repeat to 20 30 minutes lah. Target to aim for BP for more than less than 160 over 90. Maybe the hydrolyzy is no longer recommendation in the first line in the acute hypertension crisis lah in pregnancy. And then uh, all the anti hypertension we cannot give for S inhibitor because they are the cost of the effect lah, over the fetus cup, lungs and also the kidney. So, how do women die of preeclampsia? So, they want to say preeclampsia, they can cause uh, thrombocytopenia and then hypertension. They can lead to hemorrhagic stroke lah, and also they involve a thrombotic stroke. Other one, patient might die because of liver failure, cardiac failure. And then uh, ARDS lah, multi organ failure, DIVC. So, the lesson that we need to learn is when patient presented to us eclampsia, we need to stop the fitting lah, and then we need to prevent the fitting, and then aggressively we need to treat the hypertension lah, to prevent the patient to die of stroke lah, ICB and etc. So, I think that's all that was. Ada okay. apa-apa nak tanya tak? Ha. Ada apa nak tanya kat Dr. Chiang? Mainly we need to know the eclampsia and pre-eclampsia lah. And then how do we manage lah sebab nak cakap HP pun tak nampak ada banyak kes tergaling lah. Tak banyak lagi lah tengok uh, patient came with eclampsia, pre-eclampsia. Tapi we need to know how to treat lah. Mainly the ABCD and then the, the way of giving max out the anti-hypertension, the drug of choice lah. Okay. Uh, with regards to pre-eclampsia dengan eclampsia ni, I think eclampsia is pretty rare lah. I think in Malaysia overall. Mm. Because the way our, because the efforts of our public health system to follow up patient ONG kan. Those of you who ever had a wife or pregnant yourself and follow up kat KK, you will understand lah how Macam obsessive these people to follow you up kan, tak datang appointment pun call, you know, cari kat rumah, apa semua. So, this level of obsessiveness has improved the rate of eclampsia, pre-eclampsia dekat, dekat, say, dekat Malaysia lah. So, overall, in Malaysia, eclampsia ni very rare lah. 
if you see eclampsia ni usually kalau nowadays pun it's in foreigner yang usually mengandung senyap-senyap never been booked, never follow up then suddenly fit kat rumah and then baru tahu pregnant kan or those yang tak tahulah anti-vaccine ke anti-chemicals ke or what not and just actively refuse follow up or treatment so eclampsia should be very rare tapi pre-eclampsia should be more common the main thing for us we need to be able to pick up the early signs of pre-eclampsia lah because we don't want patient to progress to eclampsia so signs of pre-eclampsia yang commonnya daripada zaman obstetric dulu adalah epigastric pain okay, headache blurring of vision which is kalau i think uh, uh, apa kalau masa kat ONG benda tu sentiasa di di ni lah di masa kat ONG akan tanya specifically lah tapi just because korang keluar pada ONG you that doesn't mean that you should forget about it you have to understand obstetric ni dia tak ada major changes tau for the last 10 to 20 years you know you still treat eclampsia preeclampsia with magnesium sulfate sampai sekarang do the same management the same so by right serta update mana you pun you should know lah how to manage eclampsia okay uh, can i divert you to dekat uh, in call messages dr rafiq ada tulis soalan chang boleh tengok tak dekat dekat in call messages tu tengok soalan dr rafiq ha uh. ha jawab jawab uh-huh. But it's patient with epilepsy and also seizures. Patient with epilepsy and uh, pregnant can come with seizures. Initiate the treatment. As I say lah, kita stabilize the patient ABCD dulu. Hmm. And then uh, we can actually bagi valium dulu lah. And then uh, stabilize, stop the fitting dulu. And tengok uh, protein ke, tengok blood ke apa-apa lah. I think the initial management still the same. Tapi whether not, whether can, start can, can, or not to start you, the max up. The first part of the question, can you differentiate seizure secondary to eclampsia and seizure secondary to epilepsy? Any difference tak? Macam patient datang dengan seizure, you tengok, oh this is eclamptic fit. Oh this is, you know, epileptic fit. Can, 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 can you differentiate that? By right, susah nak differentiate bos. Kita tunggu Dr. Rafiq habis menaik. Sebab actually ni. <laughs> Dr. Rafiq tengah furiously <laughs> menaik ni. So, I tak tahu apa dia type tapi dia macam. So, so sebab dia tak tak pasang mic kot. Sebab dia susah nak bercakap. <laughs> so, dia menaik pula. Ha. Ada jawapan dari Dr. Rafiq. Eh? Uh. So, clinically it's difficult. Macam Chang cakap lah. I mean, just just by patient ha, datang really without so. knowing any history, it's it's difficult for you to differentiate between eclamptic dengan epileptic pain. However, there are certain features yang macam Dr. Rafiq mentioned to differentiate. Tapi definitely bukan definitive features. Okay, balik kepada soalan Amimah. Valium baru magnesium sulfate. Sebenarnya there's no, uh, your aim is to stop the seizure. Stop so, it. Lah patient dah don't know patient is pregnant. You know, maybe 24 weeks patient mm. gemuk or 30 weeks patient gemuk. So you don't know whether it's fat gemuk or pregnant gemuk kan. So datang no pink book and seizure. It's not wrong for you to start treatment macam seizure biasa bagi uh, uh, okay. midazola, valium, apa semua. Tak ada masalah. It's not wrong. Tapi kalau dah tahu patient tu pregnant, First line should be magnesium sulfate. Tapi in the event patient still seizing and not stopping magnesium sulfate, benzo pun ada role. Second line lah. If you know that patient is pregnant lah. Bukan kata tak boleh tapi macam Chan cakap, the initial part tu is always airway, breathing, circulation. Make sure these are stabilized before proceed with anything else. Janganlah patient tu tengah fitting, mulut puih-puih, airway obstruction, you sibuk nak dilute magnesium sulfate. That is not the right, right thing to do lah. Okay, you need to make sure that patient is stabilized in terms of their airway, breathing, circulation. Then, if you know patient is pregnant, make him self fit. If not, benzodiazepine is still an option. The aim is to stop the seizure. Okay. 
Tapi I think kalau patient main dengan eclampsia and then people are equal rasa kena buat CT scan. Sebab dulu kat Losta ada satu case daripada tak Baling. Uh, patient tu eclampsia. Masalah CT scan pun tak ada masalah. The main thing is to abort the seizure hmm. first. Uh, abort the seizure, yeah, secure the airway apa semua and then if you think lepas tu if you think patient need CT scan apa semua not an issue. Itu clinical judgement lah because you know eclampsia also associated dengan apa benda-benda macam ICP. apa ICB, Sheehan syndrome dan sebagainya. So hmm. what, 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 what trying to get that is main thing is to stabilize the patient and then if you know patient is pregnant okay treat for bagi magnesium sulfate apa semua tapi the rest of the thing neurology that you think maybe because of uh, intracranial pathology ke apa doesn't matter. Proceed lah dengan CT brain. Tapi janganlah nak CT brain masa patient tengah fitting 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 tu. Ah, uh, lah. uh, because sometimes you need to be aware masa seizure pupillary reflexes can be abnormal while patient is actively seizing. Pupil dia memang akan dilated masa dia tengah seizure. That's why check masa seizure then you have to check after the seizure aborted. That's one of the things that you can do to differentiate between pseudo seizure and seizure jugalah off topic sikit. Tapi you know kalau patient yang pseudo seizure if you check the pupillary reflex it's actually normal. This is something yang patient tak boleh mimic lah. They can mimic seizure as 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 good as they can tapi the pupillary reflex tu dia tak boleh nak mimic lah. Okay, patient kalau kalau tak percaya nanti tengoklah patient data fitting cuba check people people yang macam mana. Uh, that's one of the things that how how you differentiate between uh, pseudo seizure dengan dengan seizure betul-betul lah. Okay. Any other questions, opinion, experience? Siapa pernah tengok patient eclampsia? Actually tengok uh, patient eclampsia. Should be rare what? lah. I think but, I seumur hidup I pun, I seumur hidup I sebagai doktor lah. I think pernah tengok sekali ke dua kali je yang betul-betul eclampsia. Tapi eclampsia banyak. Eclampsia tu uh, because by definition bila patient tu zaman sekarang lah. Once patient tu sampai ada eclamptic fit, maksudnya there's some failure somewhere lah in the follow up system. Kat Malaysia ni very rigorous follow up untuk ibu mengandung dan sebagainya. Definitive treatment. Uh, kau Yim nak tanya saya ke nak tanya kawan-kawan? De- uh, definitive treatment oh, deliver lo. Deliver lo. <laughs> kalau preeclampsia, eclampsia, definitive tra- uh, kalau dah severe eclampsia ke apa-apa, is terminate the pregnant lo. Whether by uh, seizure ke deliver early lah. Yes. So terminate the pregnancy uh, lah eh. Eclampsia Terminate the pregnancy lah Not necessarily seizure You can induce If patient masih dalam peringkat pre-eclampsia Dan you can control the BP apa semua But you know But if kalau dah betul eclampsia Yang dah fit sampai intubate apa semua Ya lah Patient may end up dengan caesarean section lah Cuma kalau ICB Dia punya Management different lah. Dia punya okay. lower down the BP tu tak very aggressive sangat lah. Uh, berkenaan komen Amimah ni, memang lah kalau tanya ONG memang lah dia orang tak akan bagi benzodiazepine. Dia akan bagi Maxaf je. Sebab dia orang mana fikir benda lain. Sebab eclampsia kan. Kalau patient datang dengan seizure in pregnancy pun. You know patient epilepsy pun dia bagi magnesium sulfate. So uh, benzodiazepine in eclampsia is not first line. Uh, in patient yang memang dah tahu pregnant, dah tahu ada you know uh, pregnancy induced hypertension and patu mula-mula present dengan preeclampsia and then develop eclampsia memang benzodiazepine bukan rule uh, bukan line first line lah. Tapi maksudnya bila kita cakap dalam setting ED or if uh, di mana kita tahu patient pregnant Oh, in a setting where kita dah bagi max self dan seizure still hasn't aborted and dah ongoing kan status epilepticus ke apa semua boleh benzo is should be considered or kena treat macam status epilepticus biasalah maksudnya first line benzo second line you know intubation propofol dan sebagainya sama je macam seizure biasa 
the aim for you, the aim for us is to stop the seizure lah. Normally, bila dah bagi max staff tu, seizure tu akan abort lah. Tapi, you know, there will be the rare case where, you know, patient will continue to seize despite max staff. Ha, soalan Dr. Hafiza. Apa yang perlu di-examine dan di-document sebelum start max staff? Regarding the reflex, the respiratory rate, uh, and vital sign lah, like, sebelum start max up. And then whether patient ada allergic to max up lah. Apa lagi tu Dr. Fiza tanya? Macam tak menjawab soalan tu. Kalau kat ONG kan biasa dia ada chat kan untuk uh, specific chat untuk monitor patient who's on magnesium sulfate. So what are the components? Yes. So Dr. Rafiq yang tulis. Saya ingat ke siapa yang jawab. Tapi yang ni selepas kan? Tapi uh, to examine. Tak, uh, ideally sebelum you start max stuff. Usually mm -hmm. kalau kat Uji, before you start uh, max medicine oh, sulfate infusion lah. Uh, yeah. Because sometimes the boluses tu usually macam urgent kan. So, bila before you start infusion, you need to elicit check dulu. Deep tendon reflexes dan sebagainya as a baseline. Sebab kalau memang sebelum start tu pun patient memang ada poor deep tendon reflexes. And then bila you dah start, then you rasa eh, ni tendon reflexes dia poor. Then you don't know, naturally memang poor reflexes ke, ke uh, 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 dia memang dah magnesium toxicity. Because the first thing to go, macam I think Chiang boleh tunjukkan dalam one of slide, the first thing to go dari segi reflexes, ni reflexes tu akan go dulu. Before the respiratory and everything else lah. Once the knee reflexes are gone, you know already lah patient dah macam overdose. Uh, urine output apa semua ni kadang-kadang yalah lambat sikit lah kita nak pick up tapi one of the thing that you can elicit quickly and repeatable is the tendon reflexes lah fairly objective punya assessment to quickly screen whether your patient dah overdose or not not right tak tak sure tak tahu so, so, tengah cakap hmm. kita rapi Any 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 other comments soalan kepada Chiang? Saya saya tak ada dah. Dr. Fiza. Saya serah kat Dr. Fiza lah buat. Okay, kalau soalan oh, Amin Mah, kalau saya depends on what's available lah. Tapi kalau saya personally, I am tu lah lagi senang dengan daripada nak bagi PR. Kita ada PR punya preparation ke untuk menyesal sulfate yang readily available dekat red ke yellow ke. PR magnesium sampai tak tahu. Hello. Ah, sorry. Oh nak bagi Amin Ashraf lah. Hello. Oh, 
So, uh, so, uh, so, jawab soalan Amimah tu, I am lah. Even kat KK pun semua pun, I think, they per recommend bagi I am. Uh, rather than PR. Sebab, yelah, I, I think it's mostly due to availability lah. PR punya preparation, asal kita tak ada readily available lah. Kok Amimah petang ni boleh try nak minta PR at Max Staff dia punya isi lah. Tengok dia pun cari kat mana. Tapi it's a bit macam susah sikit nak cari kot. Uh, yang Rafiq ni, I think Rafiq merujuk kepada bolus eh. Kan the first bolus Max Staff over 20 minutes ideally. You know, it's not like bolus-bolus lah. So, it's easier or safer to give via infusion lah. Rather than nak bagi manually. Sebab I doubt any of you can 20cc, you know, 20cc bolus of uh, Maxaf selama 20 minit manually lah. Dia memenuh perlu kesabaran dan ke muscle control yang sangat hebat lah. Anything else? Anything else? Dua tapi Zah. Nak bagi AM macam mana? 5mg apa? 5 gram each batok lah. Kan ah, kita ni one watok sakit lah punggung tu Dengan berapa mil? 5 gram pun dah 10 mil So kalau 10 gram tu Masuk dia 20 mil Nak bubur satu watok Janganlah Kesian lah Lagi dia potong umur watok tu Jadi bubur 5 apa 5 gram each watok Selalunya Dia orang uh, IV actually the best Kalau untuk bolus Tapi sebab ada certain uh, KK tak ada infusion pump Ataupun in term of travelling Takut Power supply pun semua tak ada, uh, ada setengah saja suruh bagi IAM lah. Selalunya kalau dulu duduk kat Bali, uh, selalunya consult the obstetrician, dia suruh bagi IAM dulu. Okay. Uh, uh, so, lepas ada nak tanya soalan ke kalau Dr. Chiang lagi? Oh, ada assistant lah, eh, Riza. Ah, uh, itulah. Itu yang masalah ya. <laughs> Kau salah lah kat baca dia. Peneman, peneman. Okey, kalau tak ada kalau tak ada apa-apa, kita boleh kita boleh stop kita punya CME hari ini. Terima kasih kepada Chiang. Okey, uh, for refreshment of the topic untuk semua dan juga okey nice presentation. Okey, uh, thank you apa? Thank you Chiang for the good job. Yang lain, terima kasih juga kerana hadir pada CME hari ini. Asyik tak ada apa kot. Boleh lah dismiss. Thank you. Okey, thank you Chiang. Okey, banyak soalan ya. Thank <laughs> you.